Welcome to MATLAB mini session. Mike Mayer will be presenting an example to demonstrate efficient design with CERDES and export IBIS-AMI model. And what I'm going to show you today is an example of creating an IBIS-AMI model with CERDES toolbox. And just for the sake of example here, since we have a short time, it's going to assume you understand the architecture of the device you're trying to model. And then you're going to create that and create an IBIS AMI model for that. So without further ado here, I'm going to share. And somebody can tell me when they see MATLAB. Yeah. OK, good. So so Surdy's Toolbox has a an app that comes with it called Surdy's Designer. And that is where you typically start and where we'll start today. And this app allows you to floor plan the equalization in for Rx um, that you could then use to make your IBIS AMI model. So it's a pretty simple app. There's an area kind of up in the on the tool strip for configuration, and some of this are the symbol time and samples per symbol, those are setting up the analysis conditions. They're not necessary, they're not gonna affect the model in any way, just the conditions under which you analyze. Same with the target bit error rate. Uh, modulation, <clears throat> you have NRZ, PAM3, and PAM4. These do affect the model, obviously, as well as the analysis. And then you can have differential or single-ended signaling, which again will affect the model as well as you know how things are analyzed. So well, those typically are things you set based on the particular interface you're, you're modeling. And then the floor planning area is what in IBIS AMI terms would be called the analog channel. So it's the analog output of the transmitter, a simple channel model, and then output of the receiver. And, and these Actually, the analog out and analog in end up in the IBIS file itself. They're not part of the compiled DLL. They're the analog model part of the IBIS file. And then what you add is the equalization, and that actually is what gets compiled into the IBIS AMI models in the DLLs. Um, so let's say, you know, just for the sake of example here, we've got a transmitter that has an FFE, and so we just click on our blocks we have here, and for the sake of example, let's say we have a CTLE in the receiver and a DFE CDR. You know, we have other blocks here in the block library, you know, uh, AGC, so automatic gain control, variable gain amplifier, uh, saturating amplifier, and a CDR by itself. And then a pass-through block, we won't have time to talk about that, but for customization purposes, if you're trying to do something that isn't here, that's very custom in Simulink, it's handy to put down a pass-through block and then fill it in in Simulink, essentially. But we'll just stick with the standard blocks here. And for all these blocks, there's configuration. So for example, the FFE, let's say, um, you know, we know how many taps. Uh, by default here, they're down kind of below and left, there's a vector. And these are the taps. So the largest value here will be considered the main tap. Anything to the left of it are taps, the right are post cursor. So we can say, if we say, well, we only have to two post cursor taps, it's easy enough just delete one of those zeros. And now we've got um, a two post cursor tap FFE. So you can configure that that way. Um, the mode is fixed or off, so you can um, set that. The CTLE has a little more configuration possibility. Um, one, when you're setting up the curves, you know, you can have more than one curve. The easy way, if you can configure this way, you can use the gain at DC, the gain at the peaking, and the peaking frequency itself to set. And that's what, there, there are actually three different ways to do that based on whether you're specifying the gain at the two or the difference between what it calls peaking gain is the difference between the DC gain and AC gain. And then again, you could have vectors here. So these, they're nine 
uh, elements in each of these. These are nine different CTLE curves. And the nice thing about the CTLE, if you are configuring it based on either you've got the data here, uh, we'll look at a more complex one later, but there is a plot that you can add that has those curves. So you can see directly as you're configuring it, um, you know, what you've got. So if I change one of these, um, you know, change the gain on one of them, I'll see over here in the, on the gain that it, it updated, changed it. So I can set these based on data I have. If I have something more complicated than that, like for instance, uh, transfer functions, one of the specification methods here is uh, game pole zero matrix. And in this mode, you have a matrix where every row has the gain at DC and then pull zero pairs. So you can still have multiple configurations, but now you can get the gain pulls and zeros safe from transfer function data. Um, in fact, we have uh, resources on that. Um, there's a video, there's some other materials, there's an example with product of, of how to take transfer function data, turn it into a gain pull zero matrix. So um, those are the ways you can configure the curves. The modes are ADAPT, which means the CTLE is gonna look at the pulse response of the channel and pick the best curve um, based on looking at what the, uh, it's really a signal to noise ratio of the eyes, you know, which curve gives the best eye or off or fixed. Fixed meaning the user, you can choose which configuration, whereas ADAPT, of course, it's choosing it automatically. Um, then the DFE CDR is the taps again, so you can change this vector to add taps or remove taps, and then you have the minimax tap value here for um, a configuration. Then once you've got things configured, you can also look at, of course, you know, the statistical eye, all these things. This app does a statistical analysis where it's taking the pulse response of the channel and um, generating the statistical eye from that and using its, we call it the hula hoop algorithm to determine where the clock would be because all you've got is a statistical eye. We can't, you know, it's linear time invariant, so we can't really model a CDR in time in this uh, mode, but we can look at the pulse response and figure out the ideal, you know, most likely clock position, and then that's what it's used here in the analysis. That's why you see a, a clock PDF here. And so you could look at the eye, you can look at um, you know, the pulse response, and it shows you with equalization and without equalization. So you know, it's easy to compare the two. Uh, there's a report, which is kind of handy for looking at um, some measurements and you can take these things and move them around. So for example, I can put the report um, in another spot so I can see other plots and the report, but it measures the eye height, the eye width, the area, does the COM calculation, uh, vertical eye closure. And then since the, the uh, CTLE was in adapt mode, it says which of the configurations it selected and the DFE CDR was in adapt mode. So it said, well, here are the tap settings. Again, by looking at the pulse response, it said these would be the tap settings that the DFE would settle on um, if it was running in, in a time domain simulation. So the idea is you can floor plan your blocks, configure them, do some simple analysis here to make sure everything's working right. Then in order to report to IBIS AMI, we do that from Simulink. So you need to t go from here to Simulink and up in the upper right here, there's an export button. I already did that. It takes a minute and also takes a minute for Simulink to compile before it simulates. But what you get in Simulink is a Simulink model that is essentially the same thing that you just had in the app here. And I'll put them a little bit um, so we can see both. In Simulink, there's a configuration block which if you look at what's in it, it's everything that was in this configuration tool strip, you know, the symbol time, samples for symbol, all that set up. Um, if you look at the TX, 
it's a block, but underneath that, it has the FFE, and the RX is a block, and underneath that, we have the CTLE and the DFE CDR. And the analog channel here is the analog out, the analog in, and you know our simple channel model. So everything app is in Simulink. In addition, it's got a stimulus block because now we can run a time domain simulation. And then there's this eye diagram scope at the end. So I'm just gonna run this and it's gonna run a time domain simulation. And it also is gonna run the same statistical analysis that the app ran. So we'll see here when it's, the simulation is done that we'll have um, multiple windows here of results. So this eye diagram is the you know accumulating form in an eye diagram scope. You know that was it's the block here at the end of the outside of the RX. And then this other window, um, top four plots plots the app did. It's the same statistical analysis, the same things you get from there are taking the time domain results and showing you the results in the same form that you would get in statistical. So you have the eye with the clock. I only ran 2000 bits here because of time. So the CDR didn't have time to actually settle fully. So the, the clock PDF looks a little bit odd, but it also has the same eye measurements. So you can run the same and look at the same results from the and from the time domain. So, so you can do that analysis here in the from configuration. You can also look at in the IBIS model. So we've got the IBIS AMI manager, and it shows you the IBIS file that's going to be created. And you know a lot of this data comes from the analog models. And you'll see, you know, it's going to have the L keyword, which is how we point to the compiled model. There's an AMI tab, which is the IBIS AMI parameters that control the T. And we have the FFE, and our block, you know, has a mode parameter and the tap weights parameter. You can modify them here um, if you want to change their ranges or change their default values. You know, so the AMI file will have that. You can add parameters. There's a lot of customization that can be done. Um, if you have a different set of controls, for example, for your FFE, you, could, you can do that. And then the RX, of course, has a CTLE and its parameters, the DFE CDR and all its parameters. So again, you know, if you're having to customize, your parameters could have different names, different, uh, you know, whatever you can customize there. And we'll look back at Simulink for a second here. We actually export, which is this first tab. What's going to happen is if we look at TX again, there's this init block. This actually is a piece of code that got automatically generated when we exported to Simulink, and that will compile into the init call in the IBIS AMI model. And everything in here, which has the wave in, wave out, that's the time domain part, so that will compile and become the get wave call in the IBIS AMI model. So we have both the init and get wave, and if you go over and look at the receiver, you'll see the same thing. There's an init block for the receiver, and then the blocks that become the get wave. And if we look at init, um, it's a it's actually a function, and there's code here. It's actually a function. You know, it's returning. But if you look down in the middle, there's a section here where if you need to, for example, uh, you want to use a different adaptation algorithm for the CTLE or um, some other kind of customization, you can add code here that will get compiled into the init. And because it's between these special comments, if you have to refresh things and rebuild this, whatever code you put there is preserved so you don't lose it. And Above it, what's happening here in init is it's instantiating a CTLE. This is, you know, the RX, and then setting its parameters. It's instantiating a DFE CDR, setting its parameters, and then you could have code here to do things, and then it's calling each one with the impulse response so it can do its adaptation and return the 
impulse response with the equalization included. So it's doing everything that an IBIS AMI init call is supposed to do. And so that's how we can compile and have both um, the init and the get wave in our model. So if we go back to our IBIS AMI manager, so the way we export, we have you know some controls here to say, are we exporting both the TX and RX or are we exporting an IO model? If you look at uh, say DDR5, you, you might instead of a separate receiver and transmitter model. Um, you read drivers and read timers, that's keywords to link a receiver and transmitter together to be a read driver or read timer. You know, you can name them. Um, for the corners in the analog model, you can set how much the min and max are off in percentage from the typical. You can say whether they're both init and get wave or one or the other only for both the ARCs and TX. Ignore bits is an IBIS AMI parameter that says we're going to not start accumulating in time domain until that many bits have simulated so that the CDR and the DFE have time to stabilize and they're at a stable steady state condition. And then, you know, you can say what you're going to export, whether all the files or not. You hit the export button. It uses MATLAB coder and Simulink coder, and then you have a, if you have a supported compiler, C compiler on your machine, it will compile into a DLL. And what you end up with, which I have, there's a, you know, there's an IBIS file um, that it writes out that has models that came from those analog models. There's the RX AMP file which has you know, all the parameters, you know, here's the CTLE, its parameters, and there's TX AMI file, again, you know, with the FFE parameters, and then we have the DLL for the RX and the DLL for the TX. So it's a complete set of files written out, ready to go. They're IBIS AMI standard. They'll run in any uh, AMI simulator, and at this point, you're good to go. You can take those and run them in any um, simulator. So I think we're <laughs> within time, and that is probably the briefest over that process we can give. There's a lot more that could be said, especially if you're customizing things. There's a lot more to be done, but there, there are a lot of resources available, and obviously we're happy if somebody wants to know more about it to you know, talk about that. That concludes the session. Thank you for watching. For this example and more, please visit the Sturdy's Toolbox product page at mathworks.com. Thank you.